can't help but feeling sometimes street photography doesn't feel as fun as it should. It's like when I go out and shoot film, I have a great time, but when I get out and shoot digital, it's a bit like, meh. So I was thinking, what if I could make my digital experience feel a tiny bit more like the film shooting experience? But don't worry, don't worry, this is not a Fujifilm camera review. We both know how that would go. I miss my Olympus so much. This isn't even a Fuji. Why, God? Why? Obviously, I love using Sony cameras for video and for when I'm doing client work, and you just need a solid piece of modern technology to get the job done. But since I've been shooting film a bit more with street photography, I found when I go back to my Sonys, there's just something missing in the overall shooting experience that sort of takes me out of shooting street photography and getting into a similar flow that I've been finding I've got into when shooting film. The only tangible things I can really put it down to are things like using an EVF versus an OVF, things like LCD screen, things, by, things like focus by wire, having full reliance on autofocus, you kind of get used to having everything just working for you. But I think that lack of physical controls actually makes shooting street stuff a little bit less fun. I considered a lot of different options when I was trying to bridge this gap between like a modern, automatic computer of a camera versus a 1960s fully mechanical camera. And when I say I considered many options, I even considered like a first gen DSLR. I may have done something stupid when searching for something fun, I may have accidentally ordered a Fuji. But remember, this is not a Fuji review for those obvious reasons. Fuji was a bad choice. I miss the old Fuji. This is the only Olympus I have left. Why would you buy a Fuji? There's obviously better cameras out there and their JPEGs aren't even nice. But, but it's just a test to see if using like an OVF and a manual lens can bridge that shooting experience between digital and film. It's not that big of a deal, but it's digital. You're not even shooting film, so stop pretending you're shooting film. From a new digital camera, I knew there was a list of things that I wanted to have when shooting street. One was the shutter dial that I had on my Lumix LX100, an aperture ring similar to the Lumix LX100, the X100S, and also the 40mm Sony G lens that I tried. And preferably, I wanted to give an optical viewfinder another go because I've been using the optical viewfinder on this Canon 7 and on my Minolta SLR. So I did consider getting a DSLR, almost went crazy. But I realized, you know what, there's only really one other option I have in terms of an optical viewfinder on a modern camera. I really didn't enjoy the hybrid viewfinder of optical versus EVF on the Fuji X100S when I tried it, but I can't help but feel that maybe that was just down to using an optical viewfinder like that with an autofocus point. The last thing I wanted when it comes to the lens was the ability to be able to manual focus on a linear focus ring, actual physical focus ring, similar to vintage lenses, if not just using vintage lenses, that I could then zone focus using reliable zones of focus. Of course, I tried this on my Olympus EM10, which I only got rid of very recently, and I tried it with the 17 millimeter and that little focus zone setup, but actually in practice, after many days of shooting, I did not get into a good flow with it. So with all of these factors taken into account, it kind of narrowed down this choice that I had really to pick from. I ultimately went with a Fuji X-Pro1 that I picked up for very cheap, and then also a TT Artisan F1.4 23 mm which gives me a 35 mm full frame equivalent that has manual focusing, manual f-stops, zone focusing, so far, mixed opinions, but we'll get into it. I'd like to thank TT Artisan for sending me this lens. They don't get any say in this video. I'm just letting you know that's where this lens is from. Taking into consideration this lens from TT Artisan, I did consider quite a few different options when I was considering different cameras. And funnily enough, once I considered getting like a Fuji camera that had interchangeable lenses, Fuji weirdly don't have the best lenses for emulating a film shooting experience. They give you an aperture ring and they don't give you any zone focusing marks whatsoever. And in my opinion, they're missing a trick, but luckily TT Artisan are filling in that gap. The first thing I noticed as soon as I got this lens out of its box was the weight of it. And then also the aperture rings click is so satisfying. Oh, 
It's really, really nice, has a nice amount of pull. And the same goes for the focus ring. It feels nicely weighted with a good amount of pull that you can move quickly if you want to, but also you can move gradually to nail focus. I'd like to also give a special mention to the lens cap, which is like, it is metal. It's got a bit of flex to it, but it's got a nice, metal construction that sort of just dampens onto the front of the lens versus being like a plastic clicking in lens cap. To be perfectly honest, the focus ring, as much as I liked it, as soon as I felt it, once I first shot with it, I wasn't completely sold. The zones were a bit unfamiliar to me because I'm used to shooting on full frame film cameras where I'd be between F8 and F11. And on the Fuji system, that meant you were stopping down quite a lot and losing a lot of exposure but actually you can do a really good job of zone focusing about f4 and also maintain good shutter speed and a fairly low iso in most situations autofocus today is amazing it's fast it's so reliable why would you manual focus this is such a hipster thing to say of course of course manual focusing wide open on an evf is a nightmare but if you actually set to a deeper depth of field shooting with zones you can shoot a lot of the time without even looking Zone focusing doesn't work, it's just what Leica users say to make their cameras sound good. I'm guessing from that answer you haven't tried it. I don't need to try it, I know I'm right. At first, the combination of the X-Pro1 and this lens did not gel with me whatsoever. The first couple of times I shot with it, I was already considering just getting rid of both of these items. The main things I struggled with at first were nailing focus, and balancing exposure because the f-stops on the lens that would get me the right zones I was kind of thinking in full frame terms versus APS-C terms but once I kind of found a new balance with it it's been better it's not amazing but it's a bit better using the great resource that is Fuji X weekly big shout out to that website um, I put together a handful of film recipes that I wanted to try out just while I was trying out the Fuji again this isn't a Fuji review, but I just thought I would let you know which recipe a lot of these shots are using. I chose a handful of their film recipes just to try out in my different custom settings. So custom one, I had Kodachrome one. Custom two, I had Kodachrome two. Custom three, I had color analog. Custom four, I had color negative film. Custom five, I had superior extra 400. Custom six, I had classic chrome. And then in custom seven, I had monochrome, but I'm not really showing you any of that today. So after going out with the X-Pro1 and this TT Artisan lens, I shot a few different scenes, literally identical, changing the white balance shift where I had to in between these different custom settings to get the recipes right. And weirdly enough, I assumed that one of the Kodachromes or the Classic Chrome was going to be the recipe I was going to choose. But actually, the Superior Extra 400, as vivid and saturated and contrasty as it is, I didn't really care. I thought, you know what, out of camera, that looks the most appealing. And the reason why I care about that is I want to be able to use this camera similar to the way that I use a film camera, at least for a short time. And having a nice image on the back of the camera that I can show to members of the public, if people ask me why I was taking a photo or if I actually ask someone to take their photo, I can show them a shot on the back that looks nice, even if it's at like a 35 millimeter focal length. Compared to say if you were shooting on a Sony camera and a lot of the color profiles on there are a little bit washed out and desaturated, they look less nice on a Sony A7C screen compared to how it looks on this X-Pro1 screen. It's a small thing, but it's one of those things that I think you need to think about if you are gonna be interacting with people and showing them photos. And this is also part of the reason why I like shooting film street photography so much at the moment, because people can't see the photos in camera. They have to wait until you've sent them scans. JPEGs are rubbish, shoot raw. Well, yeah, I agree, raw's the best. But you're using a Fuji, you're supposed to disagree. Wait, haven't you heard? Ooh. Baby, I like it raw. Hands down, my biggest complaint when I had my X100S a couple of years ago was the viewfinder that I originally was really interested in using was a complete nightmare for me personally. <laughs> Once I made the decision to get the X-Pro1, I knew the OVF I'd have to treat completely differently. So having no image preview, for example, so you don't get any blackout or like reviewing the previous image, and then just relying on zone focus. So the only thing you really use the OVF for is framing in some situations. But because I chose a lens that's a full frame equivalent and I'm just zone focusing, you can blind fire like hip shoot 
little sneaky shots here and there pretty well in a way that is kind of forgiving to hip shooting. And so, so far, after a couple of sessions of using this camera, it's starting to work for me. For those that haven't tried manual focusing like this before, it might sound a little bit counterintuitive to just using fast autofocus in a lot of cameras, but when you're manual focusing using zones, it's not really the same. It's not like you're really dialing in critical focus. Sometimes maybe you will, but a lot of the times it's setting a rough zone of focus. So for on this TT Artisan, for example, I've been focusing between 0.7 meters, so 70 centimeters and infinity, and that's at F4. And I'm able to do that and I can notice people in my peripheral vision walking around and I can just sort of grab shots here and there. And while you might miss quite a few, you grab odd candids that you probably wouldn't have gotten otherwise, because you don't always want to be lifting your camera in someone's face to grab a candid, because they'll see you definitely. So sometimes it can just be sort of holding it casually off to the side. If you're someone that typically engages with a subject and like lets them know you're taking a photo, this might not be as much of an issue for you, but I still do this on film cameras when I am asking subjects for a photo as well. Shooting like this was never really on my like game plan of how I was planning to shoot street photography, but once I tried it a little bit on film cameras, I've actually found going back to autofocusing on a digital camera, I find a bit slow and kind of cumbersome when I could just have my focus zone set and I can just shoot straight away without having to check if the subject has been caught by the autofocus point. So if I wanted to get a manual focus for my digital camera, should I get one from TT Artisan? Well, personally, I think they're a great option. Obviously, you can adapt vintage lenses, but they can sometimes be a bit extended and cumbersome, whereas these are actually built for each individual lens mount. And to me, they kind of offer a better aesthetic. I do miss nice aesthetics. I've been shooting on Sony for so long. Maybe I should buy a Fuji. How much is the X100V? Hey, 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 I'm not promoting Fuji here. If you want to try out a Fuji camera, go check out this video on how to make a Fuji camera out of a budget Micro Four Thirds camera. I highly recommend it.